Welcome up! In this episode, we are making a comparison between direct and representative democracy in order to establish which one is better. Coming up! Hello, I'm Understanding Politics, and in this channel I explain political theories and debates to students as well as curious and passionate people, just like you. As you know, democracy was invented in ancient Greece, particularly in Athens, where a circle of free men met in the Agora, the main square of the city, to discuss and take decisions on various matters concerning the life of the polis, a word that was used to identify the city-state. The Athenian democracy was direct, and so people exercised their political power without the intermission of any representative. The state of things was achieved only with the reforms of Clisthenes in 508 and 507 BC, when the structure of the society resting on the genos, a word identifying the roots, family and relatives, some sort of clan, was changed in favor of the demos, people without any sort of distinction, that exercised virtually all powers of the city-state in the Ecclesia, the assembly, and in the Boule, a group of 500 individuals extracted randomly among the 10 different provinces in which territory of Athens had been divided. The system realized the isonomia, equality in front of the law, and the isegoria, equality in terms of freedom of speech. In this constitution, any male citizen of Athens could carry out any type of assignment if he desired. The Athenian democracy was perfected with the reforms of Pericles, that strengthened the democratic aspects of the Athenian society. This is in fact considered the golden age of the Athenian democracy. He decided to give more powers to the Ecclesia and the Boule, while depriving of some important functions the Aeropagus, the Council of Prosecutors, invested with the objective to investigate corruption. The power to convict or emanate sentences was left in the hands of the Ecclesia, and this is one of the reasons for which Pericles was described as a populist. Nowadays, Greece is a nation-state and Athens is its capital. Greece is a representative liberal democracy. In other words, it is a democracy tempered by liberal values. It is a democracy because the power is effectively exercised by all of its citizens that delegated to ad hoc institutions following a system of rule on which they agreed previously. The parliament, the equivalent of the ecclesia, is a place where politicians, namely citizens' representatives, discuss laws and regulations. The reason why liberal democracy rely on representation is double. First, being wired on a capitalist system of production, this type of society requires citizens to work, thus not having time to directly exercise their power. Second, average citizens have not the knowledge to solve the complex problems that our society is expected to face on a daily basis. Modern-day Greece has also an independent judicial system. Unlike ancient Greece, the parliament does not carry out judicial duties. The third power, the executive, is exercised by the government, that needs to have the support of the parliament and respect a system of rules coded in the constitution to guide the whole country. Here we see other aspects of liberalism. Powers are effectively separated, and the system works around rules ensuring checks and balances that allows powers not to overstep. So, taking points, who would win between ancient and modern Athens, namely between a direct and a representative democracy? The first point goes to liberal democracies. Equality is much stronger than in ancient Athens, because there are no slaves and women enjoy all rights men do. Yes, you can argue that we are never completely free and that the system enslaves us, but the difference is abysmal. Furthermore, at times, representative democracies become direct, when, on important matters, politicians ask citizens their opinion on a sensitive topic via a referendum. The second point goes to direct democracies. While it is true that, ideally, in representative democracies we elect competent people, quite often it is true the opposite. On the contrary, in the Athenian direct democracy only free men, which were incidentally also intellectuals, made the decisions. While neither representative nor direct democracies are safe from the risks of populism, direct democracies are more convincing in this particular aspect. The final point goes to, well, yes, liberal democracies. 
From a citizen's standpoint, the separation of powers, checks and balances, and the constitution are a much safer mechanism than the absolute power of the Ecclesia. Paradoxically, the Ecclesia can become a tyrant for single individuals, realizing what Alexis de Tocqueville called the tyranny of the majority. Although, I cannot simply rule democracies one over the other. The liberal democracies is undoubtedly a better way to organize the power in a normal-sized country. Nevertheless, if a country is as small as, say, San Marino, then I would suggest a direct democracy with a functioning constitution to rule said state. In this case, benefits outweigh disadvantages. So, what's all this fuss with direct democracies? The Italian Populist Party Five Star Movement made the concept a major point of its political campaigns. They even created an online platform named Rousseau for its subscribers to debate and vote on several issues. This brings up an important point. Any organization can assume the form of a democracy, an autocracy or an anocracy. In fact, this expression only qualifies how power is organized in a given organization. The Five Star Movement has adopted the direct democracy for its inner organization. The Italian Democratic Party, on the other hand, has adopted the form of a representative democracy. Both the systems are great for parties. Still, what's the use of having parties organized as autocracies, as in the case of Lega and Brothers of Italy, when you are competing in a democracy? Lecture is over. As usual, all sources will be linked in the references section of this video description. Thank you for watching.